Hi, welcome back to Focal Point AFR Talk. President Obama meeting with the press today, and I watched part of that press conference, and he got pretty testy. Uh, the reality is Barack Obama is a pretty thin-skinned guy, and he does not like to be challenged. He does not like to be questioned. He gets impatient. He gets testy. He is not like the God we serve, somebody who is slow to anger. He is prickly. He's got a relatively short fuse, and that flashed a few times in the press conference today. Uh, we got a couple of sound bites. These are just audio bites. Didn't have time to get the video clips for you, so these are just audio bites. We've got a couple of bites we're going to pray f- uh, for you from the press conference this morning. First of all, President Obama speaking about the debt, and then I'll set up the second one, which has to do with gun control. Here's President Obama talking about the debt ceiling. Now keep in mind that you know, what we've heard from some Republicans in both the House and the Senate is that they will only increase the debt ceiling by the amount of spending cuts that they're able to push through. And in order to replace the automatic spending cuts the sequester, that's $1.2 trillion. Say it takes another trillion or trillion two uh, to get us through one more year. They'd have to identify $2.5 trillion in cuts just to get the debt ceiling extended to next year. So he says, look, they would have to identify $2.5 trillion just to get us to next year. What does that tell you, ladies and gentlemen? That tells you that is President Obama admitting he doesn't even realize what he's doing. He's admitting to the American people how out of control spending is under his watch, that it is so out of control, they are overspending so badly that it would take $2.5 trillion dollars in cuts to deal with the overspending that he is responsible for. So that's the first cut from President Obama on the debt ceiling, and that's the number one thing I want you to see there is that uh, he's admitting he, he's admitting to the American people things are absolutely totally way out of control. Now here is President Obama, second uh, a sound bite on this subject, President Obama. Uh, telling Congress, look, just give me the authority to raise the debt ceiling. Now, we've Chuck, talked about I'm this. Saying- okay, hang on. Let, let me set that up. We, we talked about this before, that, that the Constitution is very clear that in, in Amendment 14, 14th Amendment, which Nancy Pelosi is, is citing and some of the other Democrats are citing as giving Obama the authority to raise the debt ceiling on his own, And the 14th Amendment does nothing of the sort because it says the validity of the public debt will not be questioned. But then it says very clearly, this is the part that people need to remember about Amendment 14, Section 5, the Congress shall have power to enforce the provisions of this article. So, yeah, it says Section 4, the validity of the public debt of the United States authorized by law shall not be questioned. And again, we've talked about this before. We'll come back to it in a second. Debt is not the same thing as an entitlement or an obligation. We need to be very, very clear about that. Public debt means debt. It means something you got to pay interest on. It means somebody loaned you money and you got to pay them back. That's debt. Entitlement spending, Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, that's not debt. There's no public debt involved in that. There may be an obligation. There may be a promise. There may be a commitment, but there is no debt. So it is debt that must not be questioned, but it's very, very clear. The Constitution says the Congress shall have power to enforce the provisions of this article. So only Congress is authorized by the Constitution to take action to deal with the public debt. But here's Barack Obama, who always tells us that he was a professor of constitutional law. This guy has no idea. This is spooky, ladies and gentlemen. He doesn't have any idea what he's talking about. He, he's not, he, you are now more familiar with the provisions of the Constitution than the President of the United States. You go back to uh, Article 1, uh, Section 8. This is where the responsibilities and the powers of action that Congress has are delineated. This is we the people. We the people said, here's how we're setting up our government. We're going to have a legislative branch, that's Congress, We're going to have an executive branch. That's the president. We're going to have a judicial branch. That's the Supreme Court. 
and the federal courts. And here's what the executive or the legislative branch, the Congress, is going to be responsible to do. This is the second paragraph to borrow money on the credit of the United States. Beginning of Section 8, the Congress shall have power to do what? To borrow money on the credit of the United States. Once again, that is an authority that we the people have invested exclusively and solely in Congress. So now you, ladies and gentlemen, because you listen to this program, you know more about the Constitution of the United States than your president does. He wants Congress to give him the... He can't do that. Congress cannot give him the power to raise the debt ceiling because that is reserved by the Constitution that he says he's this big-time scholar of. That's reserved for the Congress. So let's listen to President Obama appealing to Congress, hey, just go ahead and give me the authority unconstitutionally to raise the debt ceiling. Chuck, what I'm saying to you is that there is no simpler solution, no ready, credible solution, other than Congress either give me the authority to raise the debt ceiling or exercise the responsibility that they have kept for themselves and raise the debt ceiling. So <laughs> just give it to me. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, this is, this is what we're dealing with. This is a lawless president. This is a president who either is clueless about the Constitution or just has simply decided to ignore it. And he's counting on the ignorance of the American people. He's either counting on the American people to be as ignorant as he is of the Constitution, or he's counting on the American people to believe his deception about the Constitution. The, the, there's nowhere in the Constitution where it says to Congress, you have the authority to delegate to the president the power to raise the debt ceiling. It is simply not in there. And I want to be very, very clear. Now, there's another thing here. Uh, oh, let, let's go ahead and play the next soundbite. This is the third soundbite from the press conference this morning, President Obama. <laughs> and this is, this is ridiculous. I mean, why? I mean, this is just this is absurd to, uh, to an infinite degree. I mean, this whole thing about raising the debt ceiling is for what purpose? It's so Congress and President Obama can spend more money. If this is not about spending more money than we are taking in, there's no point to it. There's no need to raise the debt ceiling unless you want to spend more money than is coming in through tax revenue. And here's President Obama once again I guess counting upon an ignorant, gullible, naive American people to actually believe a single thing he says. Raising the debt ceiling does not authorize us to spend more. All it does is say that America will pay its bills. And we are not a deadbeat nation. And the consequences of us not paying our bills, as I outlined uh, in my opening statement, would be disastrous. So I understand the impulse to try to get around this in a simple way, uh, but there's one way to get around this. There's one way to deal with it, and that is for Congress to authorize me to pay for those items of spending that they have already authorized. So that's President Obama saying, look, raising the debt ceiling does not authorize us to spend more money. Who is he kidding? Who's he trying to fool? with that. Now, here, here's an interesting thing. Going back to 2006, uh, this is under President Bush. Republicans were in control of the White House. They were in control of the Senate. They were in control of Congress. So President Bush goes to Congress and asks them, because he knows that constitutionally, the debt ceiling is totally in the control of Congress. So he goes to a Republican-controlled Congress, and I blame him for this. This is on Bush. This is on the Republicans in the Senate. This is on the Republicans in the House. So for people out there that think I never pick on the Republicans, this was disastrous. This is President Bush doing this to us. This is a Republican-controlled Senate doing this to us. This is a Republican-controlled House doing this to us. So don't think for one minute I play favorites here. If somebody is going to run afoul of what is fiscally responsible, I'm going to land on them like a falling safe. I don't care what political label uh, they wear because the stakes are simply too high. So President Bush goes back, I think for the fourth time in his administration, to ask for an increase in the debt ceiling, this time by $781 billion. Now, to set this in context before I close the loop on this, on Friday, the Democrat leadership of the Senate, this was uh, my Majority Leader Harry Reid, 
Assistant Majority Leader Richard Durbin, Conference Chair Charles Schumer, and Conference Secretary Patty Murray, they all wrote a letter to President Obama and urged him to unilaterally raise the debt ceiling. In other words, they urged him to commit an act of treason. President Obama has taken a solemn oath to uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States. He can't turn around and just ignore it with impunity. I mean, he has, and so far he's been able to get away with it. It doesn't mean he hasn't violated his oath of office and committed treasonous offenses. This would be another one if he were to make an effort to raise the debt ceiling all by uh, himself. Now, here's what's striking is that the four people that signed this letter, Reed, Durbin, Schumer, and Patty Murray, every last one of them voted against raising the debt ceiling in 2006. Every one of them voted against raising the debt ceiling in 2006. And they talked about how irresponsible this was. President Obama voted against it. We played the soundbite uh, for you from when President Obama was on the Senate floor in 2006 and talked about reckless spending and out-of-control spending and what an outrage it was and what, what irresponsible leadership we had in the Oval Office that we have to consider raising uh, the debt ceiling. So they were outraged at the time, but every last single solitary one of them voted to raise the debt ceiling. Now, I'm just going to be able to start on this piece, and I'll finish it after the bottom of the hour. But here's a piece by David Rifkin and Lee Casey that was in the Wall Street Journal over the weekend. And what they do, and you've, you, you know about all this because you listen to Focal Point. We've been talking about this for a month. This doesn't show up in the Wall Street Journal until January 11 of 2013. But you and I have been talking about this for a month. So you're dialed in on this. They're just now catching up to where we here at Focal Point have been for the last month. And what uh, Rivkin and Casey say, there are three false arguments that are being pushed. This is the Wall Street Journal now verifying everything you've heard here. Three myths or false arguments that are being pushed hard by the Obama administration. And, and the problem they say with these myths, and I'll tell you what they are at the bottom of the hour. The problem with these myths is that they are being accepted on faith by the media and much of the political establishment. And they say, look, these myths have got to be laid to rest if the American people are going to understand the issues at stake. In other words, say, we want everybody in America to understand what the listening audience of Focal Point has understood for a month back in two.